Darren, I've not only had the privilege of being interviewed by you for Success Magazine, I've also listened to so many of your truly world-class interviews with great achievers, from Richard Branson and skateboarding legend Tony Hawk to Dr. Oz and Jillian Michaels. Out of all of the interviews you've conducted, what would be three of the most influential and why? Yeah, that, that's a great question, one that I'm asked a lot, so I will answer it here. Number one is Louis Zamperini. Louis is a 94-year-old man and one of the most extraordinary people I've ever met. Now, you know, I get a chance to meet a lot of successful people, but few what I would call a tried-and-true hero. When I heard his story, I mean, really, the stupefying odyssey of what this man went through as a POW of World War II, I had to confess to myself, I'm not sure I could have done it. I mean, Louis not only did it, he did it with a mental resilience and verve that's awe-inspiring. And when I interviewed him, you could still hear the strength of that fortitude, will, and verve at 94 years old. Laura Hillebrand wrote his story in the book called Unbroken, which is phenomenal, by the way. But what I love about Louis is he abolishes every whiny complaint, moan, or excuse you possibly could have about life right now. I mean, whenever I'm thinking about the fact that I'm having a tough day, I think, well, it's nothing like, you know, starving on a raft lost at sea for 47 days. Or whenever I think that I need to tackle a, a difficult project, I think, well, it's not as tough as pulling out a four-foot shark out of the water with my bare hands, punching it to death before it eats me, and then to tear it open and eat its liver out all natural how. Or whenever I think something is painful, I think, well, it's nothing like getting hit in the side of the head with a heavy belt buckle by a madman repeatedly. So Louis, for me, has put those little annoyances in my very good life into perspective. And for that, I'm forever grateful and truly inspired by that man. And I think you bring up a great point about perspective, which is I think a lot of us as entrepreneurs, it's so easy to get so busy being busy that we actually lose that perspective. And it makes me think of that famous proverb, which is I curse the fact I had no shoes until I saw the man who had no feet. Yeah, exactly. And then on the other side of the spectrum, really, Robin, is is Sir Richard Branson. I mean, of of, um, of all the, the characters out there, he, he is my favorite. If I were forced to trade lives with anybody, and I really love my life, you know, he would be probably the only person I could point to and go, I think they, he's, he's pretty much got it figured out. When you're around him, he is such an easygoing and affable guy, but yet you know that he runs 400 companies. How can somebody be so easygoing and so fun-loving, but have so much responsibility on their shoulders? And he talks about putting his people first, you know, the ones that uh, uh, are involved in running his companies. And he truly does. You know, he puts them before customers. He puts them before profits. He puts them before, <clears throat> sorry, he puts them before profits. He puts them before shareholders. And I think that's just a, an incredibly admirable quality of a leader of his magnitude. And then he also makes fun a major criteria. It's actually a big part of his business vetting process is that, is it going to be fun? And, you know, I think we all could take a tip from that. I mean, you know, I do a lot of things that are, are not necessarily so fun, and I probably should make different choices about it. So Richard is another one. And then the third one is is actually Maria Shriver. And it was when I asked her how she defined success and what she wanted her legacy to be, I expected something very, very grandiose and change making. I mean, here is a woman who comes from one of the, if not the most iconic and difference making families in American history. I mean, she she's been a television anchor, a best selling author, the first lady to the largest economy in the United States. And despite all this power, prestige and pressure, she learned, you know, what the true definition of success is for her. And it's very different than what most people would assume. So for Maria, success was being a daughter to her mother, caring for her father, Success was time for her children, and then being the woman that she would want as a friend. And, you know, you got to remember, her parents uh, started the Special Olympics. They started the Peace Corps. She was programmed to do life, world-changing things. And she came down to this conclusion uh, that this was what success really, really was for her. And I had to ask myself, as a published success magazine... <laughs> And I define success as we position it within the publication, but I had to sit back and ask myself, well, what is really success for me? And when I really sat down and answered that question, it was really, you know, life changing. And and I think we we often to find we often find ourselves answering that question for for others, for your parents or for society, or by comparison to your neighbors, or success as defined by your boss or by other 
you know, figures and leaders that you are, are, are following. And we never stop to ask, you know, what is success for me individually? You know, I love what I'm hearing. And when I listen to the three people that you say have been particularly influential, what comes to mind is the importance of running your own race. And I think that's a challenge for every single one of us because we're so connected right now, whether it's on the internet, whether it's television, whether it's society. And I think one of the traps is we get really busy living according to the definition of success that the world around us sells us. And in the process, sometimes we betray our own values and we lose our own connection with what's success really for us. And so what I hear you saying is these three people you've mentioned in this world of so much distraction and so much uncertainty and so much complexity, they had developed this ability to stay really true to their values, their mission, and their vision. 